on the application of foreign exchange revaluation gains. The committee identified non-monetary factors driving inflation, such as the persisting insecurity and infrastructural deficits, and noted the role of fiscal policy in addressing these shortfalls while reiterating the commitment of monetary policy support. In this regard, the commitment of monetary solid, in this regard, the committee applauded fiscal policy initiatives towards reducing the cost of living for ordinary Nigerians, including the ongoing efforts to improve food supply and provide mass transit CNG buses to ease the cost of transportation and the civil service reforms to improve the efficiency of government amongst others. Key developments in the domestic and global economies. Headline inflation year on year rose to 29.90% in January 2024 from 28.92% in December 2023. Food inflation increased to 35.41% from 33.93%, while core inflation rose to 23.59% from 23.07%. The major factors driving inflationary pressure remain exchange rate pass-through, rising cost of energy, high fiscal deficits, and lingering security challenges in major food producing areas. In addition, global factors such as tight financial conditions and trade disruptions from ongoing geopolitical tensions remain significant upside risks to the Yemi Kodoso there, the Central Bank of Nigeria governor briefing Nigerians at the end of the Monetary Policy Committee meeting that concluded yesterday. And I must say, very major hawkish policy stance was taken yesterday after that meeting. But joining me now to discuss further on, you know, decisions and deliberations that were made public to Nigerians at the end of that meeting is an economic analyst uh, who obviously is someone who is very uh, vast when it comes to, you know, trends around the Nigerian economy. Samson Simon, thank you for joining us on Business Daily this morning. Thank you and for having me, Amaka. Good morning, Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let us begin with, like I said, we saw some pretty hawkish you know, policy stance coming from the CBN yesterday and with a change with regards to the monetary policy rate, about 400 uh, basis points, you know, changing or moving the monetary policy rate from 18.75% um, to 22.75%. But looking at these figures with the eyes of an economist that is you now, what would you say um, this uh, means, especially for the ordinary Nigerian? who's wondering and just listening to these numbers and wondering what it means for the monies in their pockets. But let's hear from you. What does this mean to the average Nigerian? Um, the MPC uh, met day before yesterday and yesterday. Yesterday they came out with the community, the MPC community. And in the community, the most important uh, update was the uncle read which was increased by a whopping 400 basis points. That's quite unusual. If you look at the trend, what has happened over time, it has never been this big at once. I think uh, the central bank governor, Olaya Mikadoso, is trying to pass a message 
that is determined to fix the problem of inflation. Inflation has been a major problem. And this MPC has been a long time in coming. The last time we had MPC was in the middle of last year. So it has been seven months. And normally MPC meets bi-monthly. So I think it's time to compensate for the inability to meet for this long period of time. And the implication for hiking rates, this is uh, fast or this big, 400 basis points from 18.7% to 22.7% is that the cost of credit will go up and there will be less liquidity in the market. Inflation generally is attributable to money supply. And one way of tackling high money supply is by hiking monetary policy rates. That's the anchor rate. That's the anchor rate. That's the rate that determines other rates as far as lending is concerned. And the central bank is telling us that when you have money in your bank account, what the money was generating before now is going to generate more because of higher interest rates. And this also means that um, people will be dissuaded from borrowing money from the banks. And when people are dissuaded from borrowing money from the bank, there will be less liquidity in circulation. And there's also a downside to it because when interest rates are high, that might discourage people from investing because normally you invest by borrowing money. So if the interest rates are high, you might not be able to cope with the high interest rates. And that may, encourage, that may discourage investment. And when businesses cannot expand as fast as they want, that also means a downside. And that can probably lead to a reduction in, of the central bank is price stability. And everything must be done to ensure that prices in Nigeria remain very low, they remain stable, they remain predictable. And if you look at the upside too of higher interest rates, because if you are in a high inflation environment, whatever gains that you may have might be an So uh, he seemed, we seem to have lost because our guests. Maybe negative. We seem to have lost our guest there, but he was talking to issues around, you know, rising inflation and how much of an impact the monetary policy rate that was um, increased during yesterday's monetary policy meeting will have on Nigerians and the ordinary person on the street. But let's take again uh, a look at the address by the um, CBN governor in the person of Yami Kadoso, where he spoke extensively around, you know, issues regarding the economy. Let's just take that briefly. And then when we come back, a conversation will continue. On the application of foreign exchange revaluation gains, the committee identified non-monetary factors driving inflation, such as the persisting insecurity and infrastructural deficits, and noted the role of fiscal policy in addressing these shortfalls while reiterating the commitment of monetary policy support. In this regard, the commitment of monetary solid in this regard, the committee applauded fiscal policy initiatives towards reducing the cost of living for ordinary Nigerians, including the ongoing efforts to improve food supply and provide mass transit CNG buses to ease the cost of transportation. And the civil service reforms to improve the efficiency of government amongst others. Key developments in the domestic and global economies. 
Headline inflation year on year rose to 29.90% in January 2024 from 28.92% in December 2023. Food inflation increased to 35.41% from 33.93% while core inflation rose to 23.59% from 23.07%. The major factors driving inflationary pressure remain exchange rate pass-through, rising cost of energy, high fiscal deficits, and lingering security challenges in major food producing areas. In addition, global factors such as tight financial conditions and trade disruptions from ongoing geopolitical tensions remain significant upside risks to the outlook for domestic inflation. Staff. And my guest, Samson Simon, is still with me. That was the CBN governor, Yami Kadoso, addressing Nigerians at the end of the Monetary Policy Committee meeting. So now moving on, uh, Mr. Simon, uh, the, 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 the CBN also did, you know, uh, I would say tweak some of some, some other metrics that, that, we, that we know the, MP, the MPC to, you know, pay close attention to. And that is the cash reserve ratio, which was tweaked from 32.5 to 45.0. And we also did see the CBN and, you know, retain the liquidity ratio at 30%. But let us hear from you. Uh, what do you make of these uh, changes from the MPC? Uh, can you tell me? Yes, I can. Go on. Go, go on with your thoughts. We can hear you. Well, all right. Pertaining to the cash reserve ratio, the cash reserve ratio was also increased. So not in a small way because it went from 32.5% to 45%. This is all in a bid to reduce the liquidity within the market. I've said before that inflation is attributable to money. When you have a lot of money to change the services. And what the monetary authority has to do is to reduce the liquidity within the market. And apart from MPC, while we have reduced liquidity in the cash reserve ratio, demanding that uh, the deposit money bank set aside percent of the depositors' funds without lending such money out. That, of course, limits the ability of this deposit money bank to lend the money. And I know some people will say that MPC, CRR, and others have been deployed, that it might not give exactly the target that the central bank is trying to achieve. If not the 6 to 9 percent of overall inflation target, at least for this year, the central bank has given us four guidance of 21.4 percent. This is this factor of to achieve it. themselves might not suffice. There are necessary conditions, they may not be sufficient conditions. In part of the central bank trying to achieve its mandate, its overarching mandate, which is price stability. Okay, we also did hear, you know, from the CBN governor where he spoke to how undervalued the Naira is. And in his words, he said that uh, this was largely due to distortions and manipulations taking place. Uh, what would you say he was referring to? Or what are these distortions and manipulations you believe he was referring to? Well, Amaka, I struggle with you and my volume is at the maximum. 
Okay, I'll repeat my question. I said we also did hear from the CBN governor, Yami Kadoso, where he talked about how the Naira was highly undervalued and that was due to, you know, distortions and manipulations. So I would like to hear from you. Do you in any way know the sort of distortions and manipulations he was referring to uh, that he said is under, undervaluing the, the Naira? Uh, so, without the basis of what a uh, reasonable value of the Naira should be. And uh, I think from topic, I remember I uh, have been in some houses, and some costs have been between 650 and 850 Naira to the dollar. So, I need to look at the, market, the value of the market now, is that twice that whether on the official exchange rate or if you go to the parallel market. So it's clear from all the authorities that the data and the value. And that is, like you mentioned, discussions have happened over time. And some of them are still happening now because there's a lot of confidence in the data as a store of value. So people always rush to change whatever data that they have and sadly, it is government protecting that. Um, let me turn back on the decision for the states and the federal government in this year. Some people use the billions that they collect to change it to the era. That was a discussion because our economy is not some currency, which is the era. So, but people trying to analyze the economy. Asking others to pay everything in dollars, that has distorted the, the value of the Naira, that has made the Naira to be undervalued. And so many other factors, processing of the, of the Naira. So it's not right to say that the value that has been distorted, uh, the, there is some distortions in the market, and these distortions have made the Naira to be undervalued. Samson Simon there, economic analyst. Thank you for your insight on today's edition of the program. Thank you. And this is where we wrap up today's edition of the program, Business Daily, which is coming to you on Trust TV. And during our discuss today, we did, of course, uh, take a look at how or the deliberations and decisions by the Monetary Policy Committee meeting of the CBN from yesterday's meeting. And like I stated before, we did see that the MPC took a very hawkish stance, something very different that we haven't seen in a long time, increasing the monetary policy rate from 18.75% um, to 22 2.75 percent over 400 basis points there but we will be on the lookout to see how much of an impact that will have on the nigerian economy and the average nigerian my name is chiamaka and nendu thank you for watching and bye for now